The cycle of fate, the new generation of silly pillars in the courtyard what? What? Can he use you cherish the opportunity can you change your destiny against the heavens? Not under the control of Yi Zhonghai anymore not tempted by Qin Huai Ru anymore silly pillar is reborn, and everything will change. The good days filled with birds and animals in the yard are also coming to an end. Beasts accept Yi Yuzhu's revenge Yi Yuzhu from the quadrangle is no longer a foolish pillar he wants to live for himself Failu Novel Network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. In this life, he wants to change. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. In the early morning, a gentle ray of light shone through the old dot fashioned wooden window and onto Hiyuju's face. In his ear, a young and familiar voice rang out intermittently. Brother, wake up, brother. That voice, like a gentle force, slowly pushed away the mist in his heart. His eyelids were heavy, but the voice flowed like a stream, persistent and patient, until he finally slowly opened his eyes. The world in front of us seems to be going back in time, everything has returned to the era without television or telephone. His gaze changed from blurred to clear, seeing familiar and unfamiliar old houses, as well as those old furniture. Everything bears a striking resemblance to his memory of being 15 or 16 years old. His gaze eventually fell on the little girl beside him, with a hint of concern but also full of doubt in her eyes. Her name is Hiyuyu. At the moment, she looks like she is only 7 or 8 years old. Two small fried dough twists braids sway gently with her shaking. Hiyuyu's heart was shaken. That shock, doubt, and then shock, in an instant his brain seemed to explode, all the memories flooded back, and he suddenly realized that, this is not a dream, but reality. He has been reborn. His past is like a movie, playing rapidly in his mind. The people and things he once loved, hated, and missed seemed to mock his meaningless struggle throughout his life. Qin Huairu, Lu Xiaowa, Yi Zhonghai, Jia Zhangshi, Deaf Old Lady, Yan Bugui, Lu Haizhong and that Su Damao who has been fighting with him for a lifetime. His heart was filled with complex emotions, and he felt both disgust and regret towards Su Damao. Thinking of his previous life's failure, he felt a deep sigh. His biological son, his family, and all his efforts ended in nothing. And his sister he Rainwater, the little girl who had been clinging to him since childhood but grew up distant from him, his emotions were equally complex. He remembers mistreating his sister for the sake of the Jia family, causing her to suffer from malnutrition during her youth. He remembers her hatred and also remembers his own guilt. He Duching's voice came from a distance, with a hint of blame, but it also revealed a fatherly love. He Yuzhu looked at his father walking in, his heart intertwined with love and hate, he remembers He Duching leaving when he was sixteen years old, and he remembers taking away all his family wealth, but he also remembers that in the days without parents, He Da Ching was the only reliance for him and his sister. He Yuzhu looked at the gradually rising sun outside the window and made a decision in his heart. In this life, he wants to change, he wants to make up for past mistakes, he wants He Rainwater to no longer have hatred, he wants Su Damao to see him no longer as the one who failed. He wants to live a different life for himself. He Yuzhu was already tossing and turning on the bed. Today, for him, is a turning point in fate. He Da Ching's plan is finally about to be implemented. Take him to the steel rolling mill to start his apprenticeship. He Yuzhu's thoughts wander between past memories and future uncertainties. Dad, are you really going to the steel rolling mill today? He Yuzhu couldn't help but lightly tap his forehead, trying to sort out his thoughts from the chaos. Of course, little silly pillar. There was a hint of mockery in He Da Ching's voice, you've all grown up, it's time to learn how to earn money to support your family. He Yuzhu smiled slightly, his nickname, Little Silly Pillar, had accompanied him for many years, but today, he decided to correct his name. Don't call me silly anymore, Dad, his voice was firm. I'm not a child anymore. He Da Ching was slightly taken aback and then burst out laughing, growing up. 
Okay, let's see what you can do for this family. In the midst of his words, He Da Ching had already turned and walked towards the kitchen, starting to prepare breakfast. And He Yuzhu quietly pondered on the bed. Today is the beginning of his new life and also the beginning of his plans. There is still one year left until He Da Ching elopes with the White Widow, and he only has one year left to plan for his future. He knew that He Da Ching arranged for him to go to the steel rolling mill so that after he left, He Yuzhu could have a way to make a living. But he never considered whether this was a form of protection for He Yuzhu and his sister He Rainwater. He Yuzhu knows very well that he cannot stop He Da Ching's intentions, but no matter what, he cannot let He Da Ching leave with their family wealth. He decided that what he wanted He Da Ching to stay behind was not only memories, but also their future security. Yes, he can lose his father's love, but he cannot lose the support of life. He wants to do everything possible to make He Rainwater red with peace of mind and change her future destiny. He wants to become independent from this world and no longer be the object of calculation and bullying. Reborn once, he usually wants to seize the opportunity and win a bright future for himself and his family. He will adopt an avoidance attitude towards the complex relationships in the courtyard and no longer let himself get caught up in them. His determination is as firm as the sunshine in the morning, he usually knows, starting from today, he will start writing a brand new chapter in his life. Stupid Pillar has really grown up. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. He Yuzhu was full of energy and jumped up. He jumped out of the bedroom and loudly said to his father in the kitchen. Dad, let me help you with the meal. We'll go to work later, who will take He Yuzhue to school. Su Damao in the backyard can help. His school is right next to Rainwater School, by the way the breakfast of the He family, although simple, is very rich. One boiled egg, three bowls of oatmeal kanji, and several oatmeal mantu. This was already quite a good meal in the courtyard at that time. In the 1950s, China was in the midst of liberation, and a new society had just begun. The whole country is in a state of being in a state of being in a state of being in need of improvement, and the currency has not yet been fully unified. Fortunately, he Da Ching works as a chef at a steel rolling mill and occasionally brings home some grain, so their family can live this worry-free life. As the saying goes, in times of famine, a chef never dies of hunger. A good chef's skills are his job. As long as he takes care of this job, no matter how the outside world changes, he can live very well. He Da Ching hopes that He Yuzhu can inherit his craftsmanship and become a chef, that's also why he keeps letting He Yuzhu learn cooking. At the dinner table, He Da Ching pushed the egg in front of He Yuzhu. Today is my first day as an apprentice and I will be very tired. I ate this egg. He Yuzhu took the egg, peeled its shell, but put it into He Rainwater's bowl. He Da Ching smiled with relief. Silly Pillar has really grown up and knows how to love his sister. When did I stop loving my sister? And dad, what I called was Yuzhu, not silly Zhu, you little one, you dare to teach me a lesson. He Da Ching complained and was about to lower his head to eat when he saw a small hand reaching out. He looked up and saw He Rainwater, who was putting eggs from a bowl into his bowl. Dad, you eat. He Da Ching smiled, but in He Yuzhu's eyes, there was a hint of bitterness in his smile. An egg keeps coming and going, rain, you are the smallest in the family, you eat it, it's good to grow up. We two big men, it doesn't matter. He Da Ching spoke and patted his chest, teasing He Rainwater. The whole family laughed at the dinner table. After finishing his meal, He Da Ching said to He Yuzhu, go and give the rainwater to Su Damao, then wait for me in the front yard, and I'll take you to the steel rolling mill, okay? Rainwater, let's go. He Yuzhu held He Rainwater's hand and walked out of the door. At the moment he stepped out of the house, his heart seemed to have some connection with this land. A strange feeling surged in his heart, and he didn't know how to describe it. This courtyard carries too many memories for him, making it difficult for him to accept for a while. Just as he was immersed in his own thoughts, Su Damao suddenly jumped out of the darkness, almost making He Rainwater cry. 
She tightly held her brother's hand and pouted, appearing somewhat unhappy. Su Dumao. He Yuzhu remembered the matter of Su Dumao collecting his body in his previous life, and thought to himself that he should be better treated in this life. But he forgot that Su Dumao's personality was indeed a bit problematic, he was both greedy and playful. Silly pillar, dare you shout at me. My dad told me that today is when I go to deliver Hiyushue to school. If you yell at me again, be careful I'll leave your sister by the roadside. Su Damao's face darkened. At the age of thirteen, he was one head shorter than Hiyushu, but he dared to jump. It can be seen how much he deserves to be beaten in this personality. Brother. He Rainwater looked at Hiyushu in fear. He Yuzhu immediately bared his teeth, pulled out the soles of his shoes, and was about to throw them at Su Damao. Su Damao, I see if you dare to do this. You've eaten leopard bile, you dare to threaten me. Su Damao saw that the situation was not good and turned around to run. He Yuzhu is chasing behind. The two of them circled around the courtyard a few times, but in the end, Su Damao was exhausted and caught by He Yuzhu. Only after Su Damao was caught did he realize his plea for mercy. My silly pillar, please let me go. I just yawned a bit. I can't really throw your sister away. I know you don't have the courage. He Yuzhu let go of Su Damao, clapped his hands, and reminded him. Also, don't call me silly pillar in the future, call me rain pillar, understand? Don't be impolite. Line by line, rain pillar, Rain Pillar. Su Damao quickly agreed. He Yuzhu felt relieved to hand over his sister to him after seeing his good attitude. But he kindly reminded him, what my sister handed you, what she still needs to be when she brings it back. If you lose a single hair, I'll make it hard for you to eat and walk around. I will perform well. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. The morning sunshine filtered through the eaves of Nanluoga Lane and sprinkled onto the busy streets. Hidaching pushed open the door and walked steadily towards the front yard, his destination being the steel rolling mill. Today, his eldest son Hiyuzhu will follow him into this world full of metal and high-temperature oil pots, starting his apprenticeship as a chef. Along the way, the greetings from the neighbors were as warm as spring breeze, with respect in their eyes, this is recognition of Hida Ching, a skilled chef. He has a deep friendship with Lu Bancheng, the chairman of the major shareholder of the steel rolling mill, this kind of relationship naturally gave him a place in the courtyard. Yes, take silly pillar to apprentice today. There was a hint of pride in Hida Ching's voice. His son, He Yuzhu, although once jokingly referred to as a foolish pillar by people, his wisdom and talent cannot be underestimated. He Yuzhu, he has heard enough of this name. He doesn't like the term, silly pillar, and longs to be treated equally, being treated as an adult, someone who is about to embark on a new journey in life. Dad, it's agreed not to call me silly. Call me, pillar, or, rain pillar, there was a hint of persistence in He Yuzhu's voice, which was his declaration of self.identity. He Duching just smiled, he understood that this was a sign of his son growing up. He joked softly, seemingly indifferent, but in reality, he felt proud inside. Look at this child, as he grows up, he still knows how to be ashamed. Children nowadays, their wings are so hard that they can't stand it any longer. And Yi Zhonghai, one of the neighbors, is preparing to go to work. Seeing He Da Qing and He Yuzhu, he greeted them. Good morning, Qing Dynasty. Take silly pillar to apprentice today. He Yuzhu turned his head and was slightly taken aback by the image of Yi Zhonghai. Time seems to have returned to many years ago, when Yi Zhonghai was full of energy, and beneath his blue work uniform was a youthful figure. Yeah, Lao Yi. Should we go together later? There was a hint of anticipation in He Da Qing's voice. No, I have an early shift today and I'm afraid we won't be able to leave together in time. Yi Zhonghai refused but his gaze fell on Hiyuzhu, which was a kind of expectation and encouragement from the predecessors for the younger generation. Silly Zhu, you should study hard with your father's apprentice. 
I have learned, and all the skills are yours. Yi Zhonghai patted He Yuzhu's shoulder, and his father-like appearance made a warm current surge in He Yuzhu's heart. Uncle Yi, don't call me silly in the future. I am already a working person. That's not a good name to call. He Yuzhu's reminder exudes a sense of seriousness and persistence. Yi Zhonghai gave him a meaningful glance, with the corners of his mouth raised, without saying a word. He nodded lightly, turned around and left, leaving behind a lonely figure. He Yuzhu stared at his back, feeling a bit complicated in his heart. Today is his first day at work, he cannot be late. He De Ching's words interrupted He Yuzhu's thoughts, and they walked through the courtyard into Nanluoga Lane, the kitchen behind the steel rolling mill. He De Ching solemnly introduced He Yuzhu to everyone, and his words were filled with pride and anticipation. This is He Yuzhu, my eldest son of He De Ching. He is also my newly recruited disciple. I hope everyone will take care of him more in the future. Of course, there's no need to worry about my face. What did he do wrong? Teach him a lesson, teacher. He usually smiled and nodded at everyone, his behavior being very polite. Several teachers also followed He Da Ching's words and exchanged pleasantries, their words filled with anticipation and welcome. The young man looks quite sturdy. He's just like your father. Look at this big hand, it looks like it's a great ingredient for being a chef. In the future, I think the position of the kitchen chef will be changed. Isn't it, Qing Dynasty? He Da Qing smiled, his words filled with pride and anticipation. I'm not worried about that. Green is better than blue than blue. If my son succeeds, I, as a father, will also be happy in my heart. Ha <laughs> ha. A joyful atmosphere was instantly ignited in the kitchen, after chatting and laughing, he da Ching took Yi Yuzhu to familiarize themselves with the kitchen environment. The kitchen in the steel rolling mill is quite large, with several stoves alone, the stove used to cook mantu for big pot rice was also divided into several. He Yuzhu is very familiar with the kitchen of the steel rolling mill. In his previous life, he stood on the stove of a steel rolling mill for ten years. Every kitchen knife and every dish here are his old acquaintances. You can't go straight to the stove when you first arrive. Today, I will mainly familiarize myself with the operation process of the kitchen. Master Before He Da Ching could finish speaking, a square head suddenly popped out from beside him. He Da Ching's words were interrupted, and a square head emerged from the shadow of the kitchen, with beads of sweat on his face, indicating that he had arrived in a hurry but was still late. You're late again, kid. He Da Ching patted the square head in dissatisfaction, then turned to He Yuzhu and introduced, This is your senior brother, Zhang Dabiao. This is He Yuzhu, he will be your junior brother from now on. You two should get to know each other. Zhang Dabiao quickly reached out his hand and shook hands with He Yuzhu. He Yuzhu is not unfamiliar with Zhang Dabiao. He has been with He Da Ching for many years, although he is lazy and has no talent for cooking, but He Da Ching, due to his mentor-disciple relationship, has always kept him in the kitchen, responsible for some miscellaneous work, occasionally having him stir-fry a big pot of vegetables. He Yuzhu used to disdain him, but now, with decades of social experience of rebirth, his mentality has become much more peaceful. Hello senior brother, he Yuzhu politely greeted. Upon hearing this sound from his senior brother, Zhang Dabiao was filled with joy and felt valued. Hello, hello. I often hear my master talk about you, but it's not as good as seeing you all at once. Look at this big hand, it looks like it's just a stir-frying pan. He Da Ching felt a little relieved upon seeing He Yuzhu's performance. He knew that He Yuzhu was arrogant and worried that he wouldn't get along well with others, but now it seems that his worries are unnecessary. At this moment, a leisurely summons came from the kitchen door. Master He. He Da Ching turned around and saw that it was Xiao Huang, the secretary of Lu Bancheng. Lu Dong asked you to go to the reception room and said there is an urgent matter. If you're not busy at the moment, hurry up and go Xiao Huang's voice exudes a sense of urgency. He Da Ching dared not neglect, 
but was worried that he Yuzhu might make some mistakes in the new environment, so he first explained to Zhang Dabiao. I'll go find Lu Dong first. Can you help arrange it, He Yuzhu? Then he anxiously reminded He Yuzhu, remember to listen to your senior brothers and masters. You've just arrived, and you're the youngest here. You need to be kind when interacting with people, okay, don't worry, dad. Whether you're here or not, I'll behave well, He Yuzhu replied confidently. The pillar is really a young person, so agile. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. He da Ching nodded lightly, his gaze fixed on Secretary Xiao Huang, and then turned to follow his footsteps, feeling a bit uneasy in his heart. He is always worried that as soon as he turns around, He Yuzhu will conflict with others. He plans to complete the tasks at hand as soon as possible and quickly return to the kitchen to see if the situation goes smoothly. He Yuzhu saw that the people in the kitchen were busy and he stood there looking a bit abrupt. So he took the initiative to move forward and asked Zhang Dabiao, who was busy. Senior brother, what do you think I can do? Zhang Dabiao originally thought that since he was the son of Hida Ching, it was not advisable to let him work too hard. But He Yuzhu himself suggested it, and it's not appropriate to arrange for him to be idle. In hesitation, he pointed to the piles of potatoes and cabbage on the ground, he said, how about you help me peel potatoes and wash cabbage together? The meal is about to start, and we will work together to improve efficiency. He usually looked at the cabbage, and memories flooded in like awakened floodwaters. The scene back then was astonishingly similar to what it is now. Zhang Dabiao once arranged for him to wash cabbage and peel potatoes, and he agreed and followed suit. However, Zhang Dabiao's movements were always one step slower, so his young anger burned, thinking that Zhang Dabiao was intentional, and the two had a big argument in the kitchen. Unfortunately, this scene was caught by a passing director. On his first day at work, he was criticized, and when he returned home, He Da Ching's face didn't look good either. He Yuzhu couldn't help but shake his head as he recalled the foolish things he had done before. He understands that in a new place, obedience is the most basic principle. How can he conflict with colleagues and leaders on the first day? He Da Ching was fine during his time, but once he left, how should he handle himself? With this in mind, He Yuzhu picked up a small matzah without saying a word, sat next to potatoes and cabbage, and worked with Zhang Dabiao. Zhang Dabiao was worried that he wouldn't know how to do it, so he picked up a potato and taught him. The sprouts on this potato need to be peeled off, otherwise it is easy to be poisoned when cooked. Give it a try. Speaking, he handed the potatoes to Hiyuzhu. Hiyuzhu took the potato and the feeling of splitting headache came again. He supported his forehead and closed his eyes in discomfort. He was holding a potato in his hand, thinking hard. So, now that he's an apprentice in the kitchen, peeling potatoes should be considered a job, right? Mind it, he thought to himself, since we all have to work, why not give it a try? Thinking of this, he usually picked up a potato scraper and began peeling. His movements gradually became proficient, and after peeling one potato, he picked up the second one. He found himself peeling potatoes faster and faster, his hands dancing on the potatoes, almost like playing magic. On the other side, Zhang Dabiao only peeled about 10 potatoes. And He Yuzhu has already shaved more than 30. Watching his experience points continue to climb, He Yuzhu worked even harder. Zhang Dabiao looked at him in surprise and said anxiously, Junior brother, don't peel too fast, be careful when you scratch your hands. It's okay, senior brother. I have a plan in mind. He Yuzhu answered without stopping. In no time, he finished peeling a whole pot of potatoes. Zhang Dabiao looked at the potatoes in his hand that had not been peeled yet and fell into contemplation. Pillar, you're too fast. Did you finish the job alone for two people, I've been doing these things at home since I was young, and I've gotten used to them. He Yuzhu said, then went to get a ladle and added water to the cabbage basin one by one, preparing to wash the cabbage. The chefs in the kitchen saw him working so hard and all put down their work, praising him. 
the pillar is really a young person, so agile. No, when he da Ching first arrived, he didn't work as hard as he did. Pillar, why don't you take a break? Upon hearing these words, Zhang Dabiao was also afraid that he would be exhausted, so he quickly poured him a glass of water and advised him to take a sip of water first. Reflection Pillar, you're too fast. Did you finish the job alone for two people he Yuzhu wiped his hands on his apron and took it over, saying, Thank you, senior brother. This move deeply moved Zhang Dabiao. He Yuzhu's politeness once again made him feel respected. You should know that he is basically a little transparent in the kitchen, and even the teachers and masters don't take him seriously. You're welcome, take a break and I'll wash the cabbage. Zhang Dabiao's voluntary request for help was unprecedented in the kitchen. When the teachers and masters saw this scene, they couldn't help but joke. Pillar, you have a lot of face. We have been working with Dabiao for many years and have never seen him take the initiative to work. It wasn't the diligent pillar that drove De Biao. As soon as these words were spoken, the kitchen burst into laughter. He Yuzhu didn't really let Zhang De Biao do it alone, so he took the initiative to divide some work into his own basin. The two of them were working passionately, without even noticing a pair of secretly observing eyes appearing on the window at the door. The pillar has really grown up. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. He Ching observed the hard-working figure of He Yuzhu through the small window in the kitchen, and a relieved smile couldn't help but appear on his face. The previous worries about my son dissipated without a trace in this smile. He joyfully pushed the door open and was immediately surrounded by a group of teachers. De Qing, you can't help but mention that your son is really a piece of good material. They all exclaimed, look at him, the potatoes and cabbage were handled in an orderly manner in less than an hour. Even De Biao was influenced by him and became diligent. When you were away, he poured water for De Biao, and that, thank you, was really heartwarming. This child is both polite and hardworking, how well educated he is. The teachers praised him while also giving him a thumbs up. Faced with everyone's praise of his son, he felt immensely honored and smiled brightly. Looking back at He Yuzhu, he saw that he had just finished cleaning the vegetables, he picked up the mop again and started mopping the floor, his heart filled with warmth, it's like sitting on a hot kong in the cold weather of March 9th, enjoying the pleasure of roasted sweet potatoes. This sense of satisfaction made him feel a bit complacent. That's natural, don't you even see whose son it is? This is my son, He Da Ching. He said proudly, but his heart still ached for the child. So He Da Ching quickly stepped forward and took the mop from his son's hand, you go and rest quickly. Let De Biao come and drag it, she said softly, Dad, I'm not tired. He Yuzhu couldn't bear to give up these opportunities to continuously increase his experience points. He Da Ching patted He Yuzhu's shoulder with satisfaction and said affectionately. Our pillars have really grown up. In the future, Dad can't call you silly anymore. In the future, I will call you, Pillar, I should have called it that long ago, Dad. I'm always called silly, I'm almost called silly. He Yuzhu joked. The chefs in the kitchen once again burst into laughter. The appearance of He Yuzhu in the kitchen injected vitality, making the originally dull environment full of laughter and joy. On this day, He Yuzhu's hard-working legs hardly stopped, his busy figure shuttles through every corner of the kitchen. He Da Ching looked at his son with immense pride. When stir-frying, he couldn't help but hum a tune. His son's growth completely relieved him. He was still hesitating whether He Yuzhu could take good care of himself and his sister if he really left. Now, these concerns have dissipated. He Da Ching was pleased with the spring breeze and walked briskly, while he Yuzhu followed closely behind him with mixed feelings in his heart. Pillar, today's performance really made my face shine. Dad is happy. Today, I'm going to buy a bottle of good wine to celebrate. You go back to the courtyard first, let's have a few drinks tonight, father and son. As he Da Ching spoke, he turned around and walked towards the direction of the wine shop. 
He Yuzhu looked at his father's back and gently shook his head. He was too clear that the reason why He Da Ching bought wine was just a cover, his real purpose was to meet that white widow. He Da Ching was still holding the five boxed meals he had just received today, which gave He Yuzhu some comfort in his heart. He knew that since he couldn't stop his father, there was no need to worry about those trivial matters. It is real to get some benefits from He Da Ching before he hurriedly leaves. He quickly reviewed today's experience in his heart. If as usual, just a small dispute over peeling potatoes is enough to make He Da Ching blow his beard and stare at him, the wedding banquet for buying wine will naturally be missed. Is it possible to change the course of an event just because one's own choice is different? This idea is as confusing as the butterfly effect. He usually couldn't help but think that if this were true, everything in the future would become unpredictable. But this also means that the direction of fate depends entirely on his own choices. He usually returned to the courtyard empty-handed, while Yen Bugue waited at the door for a long time. Seeing him return, his face showed disappointment. Uncle Yen, please don't wait. The boxed meals my dad brought back may not be enough for the three of us to eat, so we don't have your portion. Yen Bugue's words made Uncle Yen feel a bit embarrassed. He tactically pushed his glasses, trying to resolve the embarrassment. He usually noticed that his glasses were quite new, and it seemed that the one he had glued with tape before was deliberately damaged. Uncle Yen is just asking casually, there's no other meaning. How do you feel on your first day at work today? Yen Bugue attempted to ease the atmosphere. I feel pretty good, he Yuzhu replied. After hearing this, Yen Bugue repeatedly said, That's good, that's good, as he spoke, he patted he Yuzhu's shoulder and then turned around to leave with hurried steps. He Yuzhu couldn't help but laugh as he looked at his hurried back. What are you looking at, pillars? He Da Ching's voice suddenly came from behind, startling He Yuzhu. He turned his head and saw He Da Ching holding a boxed lunch in his hand, the quantity has decreased from five to three, but I have an extra bottle of wine in my hand, which is Nolanch and Urguotu. I didn't see anything, Dad. Are you not afraid to spoil my taste when you buy such good wine? He Yuzhu joked. He Da Ching smiled and patted his shoulder. As long as my son can give me such a long face every day, I will buy you good wine every day. That's not good for Urguotu. I want to drink Finjil, he Yuzhu said mischievously. You kid, you haven't had a drink yet, you're just holding it in your mouth. He Da Ching pretended to blame, but in reality, he enjoyed it. That's right, I just want money. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The dispute between He Yuzhu and his father He Da Ching was noticed by Yi Zhonghai. This kind neighbor happened to pass by the father and son on the journey and stopped with a smile. He Da Ching, what are you two, father and son, enjoying? Don't you tell me such great good news there was a hint of mockery in his voice. He Da Ching turned his head, his smile still on his face, and enthusiastically answered. Brother Yi, my son performed well in the kitchen today, and I need to give him a good compliment. Are you free tonight to celebrate together? Yi Zhonghai smiled slightly and waved his hand, saying, I'm fine. Dinner is already prepared at home. However, this child really needs to be nurtured well and will definitely have a promising future speaking, Yi Zhonghai patted He Yuzhu's shoulder with a kind tone. He Yuzhu remained silent and did not respond. Upon seeing this, Yi Zhonghai stopped saying anything and turned around to leave. He Da Ching looked at his back with a hint of displeasure in his eyes. Yu Zhu, Uncle Yi is an elder, he's talking to you. He Yu Zhu felt unhappy in his heart, but his emotions were suppressed by the cheers of his sister He Rainwater. He gently picked up He Rainwater, and the laughter of the siblings appeared particularly clear in the night. At this moment, Su Damao happened to have finished sending He Rainwater home and had a face dot to dot face meeting with He Da Ching. Uncle He, I'm back. His voice was calm. He Da Ching nodded slightly and handed Su Damao a boxed lunch. This is for you, take it home and eat with your parents. Su Damao took it with a grateful expression on his face. 
He Yuzhu couldn't help but interject as he watched the scene, five boxed meals, why are there only three left now? He da Ching felt a bit embarrassed. He knew that He Yuzhu had grown up and could no longer conceal it like before. He changed the topic and said, Pillar, you know our neighborhood has a deep friendship. Sometimes, help is mutual He Yuzhu frowned. He didn't want to pursue the matter of boxed meals, but he wanted to know his father's true intentions. He da Ching sat down in silence and poured himself a glass of wine. He Yuzhu saw his father's evasive gaze and knew he had to talk. Dad, there's something I need you to know. He da Ching looked up and looked at his son with complex eyes. He knew that He Yuzhu was no longer the child who needed his protection. I know you have grown up and have your own ideas. But before I decide on the next step, I hope you can consider me and Rainwater He Yuzhu's gaze was firm, he needed his father's promise. He da Ching sighed, knowing that his son's growth was unstoppable. He nodded and compromised, Pillar, I know your concerns. I will have a decision that we are all satisfied with at this moment, He da Ching deeply felt a sense of powerlessness. His son has grown up and needs him to make a choice. And this feeling made him feel both relieved and uneasy. The wine glass in He Yuzhu's hand shimmered lightly under the light, he tightly grasped it, looked up, and drank the deep red liquid from the cup in one gulp. That is both a determination and a release. I hope you can leave us with enough security before you leave. His voice was low, but it conveyed his determination clearly. Simply put, you just want money. He da Ching's voice carried a hint of fatigue, but his gaze was firm. He Yuzhu nodded with a firm gaze and said, that's right, I just want money. Think about it, how will the two of us live after you leave? I'm only fifteen years old now, can you possibly want me to have a child to support my younger sister, Pillar, Dad knows your concerns, but you're asking too much. I really don't have that much. He da Ching's voice was filled with helplessness. Then start accumulating from now on. He Yuzhu's voice was firm, and his eyes were filled with determination. He da Ching fell silent, knowing that what He Yuzhu said made sense. He is a chef, and his monthly salary is not cheap. After deducting daily expenses, he can indeed leave quite a bit. He looked at He Yuzhu and sighed deeply, I promise you that all the money I save every month will be given to you. He Yuzhu's eyes lit up, he didn't expect He Da Ching to agree so easily. He felt a surge of excitement in his heart, but his face remained silent. Then you have to keep your word. My husband speaks with great determination, and I will never retract what He Da Ching says. He Da Ching's voice was firm. Okay, from now on, once you receive your monthly salary, you can give me thirty. He Yuzhu's voice was full of determination. He Da Ching gave He Yuzhu a deep glance and then nodded, Okay, I'll give it to you. There's one more thing, He Yuzhu's voice remained calm. Speak up, He Da Ching waved his hand, his eyes filled with fatigue. Before you leave, you need to make me become a regular, He Yuzhu's voice was firm. He Da Ching remained silent for a moment, then nodded and said, This is no problem. I didn't originally intend to leave immediately. I asked you to study at the steel rolling mill just to wait for your job stability before I left. Next year, it's probably around. Upon hearing these words, He Yuzhu felt a surge of excitement in his heart, but his face remained calm. I know your plan, I'm waiting for you. Unbreakable warmth and happiness. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. He Yuzhu's words silenced He Da Ching for a while, and he looked deeply at his son with a subtle softness in his eyes. This is an era full of challenges, where young people have unlimited opportunities and possibilities, as a father, he hopes his son can fly higher, but he is afraid that his son will suffer in the outside world. He Yuzhu requested He Da Ching to buy him a bicycle. It represents a symbol of a son's desire for independence. Okay, Pillar, Dad promises you. He Da Ching finally spoke, his voice a bit hoarse. He picked up his glass and lightly touched it with He Yuzhu's glass, which was a tacit understanding between men. 
Subsequently, the two father and son talked about how Hida Ching worked hard to raise the children after He Yuzhu's mother passed away early. He told He Yuzhu that even after he left home, he would do his best to send some money back home every month, fulfilling his father's responsibility. After listening, He Yuzhu felt warm in his heart. He knew that his father's money was not given casually, it was a heavy love and responsibility. But he also couldn't let his father's money fall into the hands of others, so he requested his father to send the money to the steel mill where he worked to avoid being intercepted by others. The dinner ended in such a warm and solemn atmosphere. He Yuzhu held his younger sister He Rainwater and looked at his father He Da Ching with a smile that made the corners of his eyes explode, he secretly swore in his heart that he would make his father proud and give his sister a bright future. He Da Ching spoke his words and acted accordingly. The next day, he led He Yuzhu on a journey to find a bicycle. They arrived at the largest department store in the area together and went straight to the bicycle specialty area. On the shelves, there are various types of bicycles arranged in an orderly manner, ranging from simple and practical to luxurious and unique. Due to the 1950s, many well-known domestic bicycle brands have not yet emerged, therefore, most of the vehicles in front of us are imported from around the world. The salesperson took out a beautiful picture album, and when he opened it, a hint of surprise flashed in Hiyuzhu's eyes. The brands displayed in the brochure include Bodeman, Dolan, Mud Fox, Raleigh, White, and others, each one exudes a unique radiance, and the subsequent prices are equally dazzling. The price of the Mud Fox brand bicycle is as high as 198 yuan, almost accounting for the total of Hida Ching's four-month salary. However, Hida Ching seems to have not taken the price to heart, and he confidently stated. Buy whichever you like. The salesperson was stunned by his generosity and couldn't help but laugh. It's really rare for such a father to choose a bicycle for his child without even asking the price, and just pick the most expensive one. He Da Ching smiled and replied, as long as the child likes it, money is something outside of oneself, and you can still earn more after spending it. He usually hesitated in front of many bicycles, and in the end, he pointed to Dolan's bicycle, although it is not as expensive as a mud fox, nor does it have the luxurious features of reinforced and variable speed like a mud fox, but for Hiyuzhu, it's already enough. The salesperson, seeing the situation, reminded slightly displeased, there is stock available, but this car is just a regular reinforcement, without a gearbox, and the size is smaller, you may. Hiyuzhu said firmly, that's enough. I just need it for work, not too good. He da Ching looked at He Yuzhu with a hint of relief in his eyes. He believes that his son is already sensible and knows how to save for his father. So he decided, since you're here, buy a good one that's sturdy and durable, and can ride for several years. He pointed to the mud fox's bicycle and asked, Do you have it in stock? I'll take it today. The salesperson immediately became enthusiastic upon seeing the situation and quickly issued an invoice for him, and inform us. Buying a car here, license plates, etc. are all included. A total of 198 yuan, let's go there and make the payment he usually watched as he da Ching handed a thick stack of banknotes to the cashier, and an indescribable emotion surged in his heart. He recalled the past, and he da Ching left the world early, after that, he never enjoyed fatherly love again. Now, this generosity and deep love from his father make him feel incredibly warm and happy. In that materialistic era, He Da Ching was willing to use an amount equivalent to four months' salary to buy himself a bicycle, this behavior caused subtle changes in He Yuzhu's heart. The deep dot rooted resentment is like the sunlight melting ice and snow in spring, melting bit by bit. Instead, it is a complex mood mixed with more or less guilt. Dad, actually I don't need such an expensive car. I'm just using it to pick up and drop off rainwater from work he usually tried to persuade. How did you become a motherly child? What else do you say after buying everything? I know you are saving for me, but saving some money is meaningless there was a hint of unquestionable determination in He Da Ching's tone. He Da Ching's smile had a tobacco flavor, and his yellow teeth stood out in the dim light. He Yuzhu finally didn't argue anymore, 
and the salesperson's words seemed to touch his heartstrings even more. Little brother, you should be content. I have been my daughter for over thirty years, and my dad never even bought me a dowry. You have such a generous father, it's really enviable he Yuzhu's heart was filled with complex emotions, and he understood that although Hida Ching was kind to him, their time was running out. He doesn't want to blame Hida Ching, pursuing happiness is everyone's right. However, inner loss cannot be avoided. They left the department store, and he Yuzhu got on his bike, he patted the back seat and said, Dad, what are you waiting for? Come on up. He da Ching hesitated and said, Can you ride a bike? Don't drop me. If you don't know how to ride, would I let you buy this car? Hurry up, let's try this car. He Yuzhu's tone was full of confidence. He da Ching finally agreed and carefully sat in the back seat, the soft cushions on the car made him feel exceptionally comfortable. This car is really good, even the back seat. He Yuzhu didn't let He Da Ching finish speaking. He kicked hard and the bicycle instantly spun in place, this scene made He Da Ching's face pale with fear. He tightly grasped He Yuzhu's clothes and dared not slack off. And He Yuzhu laughed heartily at this absurd and warm moment. He Rainwater's brother is great. You are listening at novel full dot audio. He da Ching looked embarrassed. He was about to refute, but he heard He Yuzhu smile and say. Dad, stop boasting and let's go home. After speaking, He Yuzhu rode his bike steadily, carrying He da Ching through the bustling streets and alleys of the capital. The trees on the street quickly retreated, as if witnessing time, while He Yuzhu's wheels rolled forward in front of him. He da Ching nervously grabbed the edge of the seat, but his heart slowly relaxed with the speed of the bicycle. You're such a good cyclist, kid. He da Ching couldn't help but praise him. He Yuzhu smiled and said, maybe it's talent, after all, I have such a good father. Don't praise yourself, He da Ching chuckled lightly, but his eyes were filled with pride. Quickly, they passed through the bustling streets and turned into the quiet Nanluoga lane. In the alley, Su Damao and He Rainwater walked side by side after school, and the sound of bicycle bells shattered this tranquility. Be careful. Su Damao quickly pulled He Rainwater aside, when it was clear that it was He Yuzhu, his face suddenly became ugly. Silly pillar, what are you scaring me for? Su Damao asked reproachfully. He Yuzhu stopped his bike and looked at him, you're the one scaring me. I didn't expect you to be quite responsible and know how to protect my sister, brother. Dad. He Rainwater excitedly rushed over and praised He Yuzhu's new bicycle, where did this bicycle come from? It's so beautiful. Su Damao was shocked to hear that this bicycle was bought by He Da Ching for his siblings. He was also unhappy because he knew that only by picking up and dropping off He Rainwater from school, He Da Ching would give him delicious food. He Yuzhu looked at Su Damao and thought to himself, even if I am reborn, I still can't help but want to hit you. Su Damao covered the bounced forehead with tears in his eyes and said, Su Damao, don't be big or small. Tell you not to call me, silly pillar. Do you hear me calling, pillar brother, when you see me in the future? I can't hear you. Su Damao said jealously, completely forgetting the consequences of angering silly Zhu. Isn't it just buying a bicycle? If I want it, my dad will also buy it for me. You wait. Su Damao shouted. He Yuzhu smiled and said, I'll wait. I'll see if you can ride this bike in your lifetime. He Yuzhu teased Su Damao, but Su Damao took it seriously. He ran away and turned his head to shout, You wait. I'll have my dad buy it for me today. He Yuzhu smiled but didn't care. In his eyes, the young Su Damao was quite cute when he got angry. He Da Ching got off the car and carried He Rainwater onto the back seat. He Rainwater got on his bike for the first time, it was so fresh that he clamored for He Yuzhu to ride a few more laps before he was willing to go home. He Yuzhu leaned against her, circling around the alley one after another. The children on the road looked enviously at He Rainwater and exclaimed, He Rainwater's brother is amazing, he even took her on a bicycle. 
He rainwater turned back proudly and shouted, because my brother is he Yuzhu. He Yuzhu is just good to me. He Yuzhu listened with a smile on his face. But the summer breeze seemed to roll up a strand of fine sand, blinding his eyes, and some salty liquid entered his mouth. He suddenly felt a pang of sadness because he knew that this happiness would soon disappear. The father and son of Hidaching, as usual, rode bicycles along the peaceful path of forty-nine cities as the sun set in the west. They enjoyed the warm breeze and immersed themselves in the joy brought by cycling. It wasn't until the night fell and their stomachs rumbled that it marked the time for them to go home for dinner. Duching gently pushed his bicycle with one hand and let he rainwater with the other, leisurely entering the gate of the courtyard. The residents in the courtyard have started preparing dinner, and the smoke from the kitchen is rising. The air is filled with the aroma of the food. Da Ching, has the pillar returned. A middle-aged woman was frying vegetables outdoors and asked without looking up. Her gaze caught a glimpse of Hiyuzhu's new bicycle while cooking. Oh! Where's the new bike from? exclaimed the old lady, as if she had discovered a new continent. In an instant, the neighbors of the courtyard heard the sound and gathered around the father and son of the He family. In that era, bicycles were a luxury item that was almost rare for ordinary people to see. Not to mention, like today, having the opportunity to get up close and even touch with one's own hands. Pillar, your car is simply too beautiful. The neighbors gathered around Hiyuzhu's new bicycle, admiring him greatly. There is still foreign language written on it. Someone pointed out the English logo on the car and found it very novel. This thing is a foreign car, of course it's written in foreign language. He usually explained with a smile, his face filled with pride. The crowd gathered around the bicycle, chattering incessantly, with envy and amazement in their eyes. Bicycles not only changed their way of life, but also became a bridge for communication between them, connecting everyone's heart. The gap between people is truly incomparable. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yen Bugue struggled through the crowd as his gaze was suddenly drawn to Hiyuzhu's new car. He had long longed to have his own bicycle in his heart, but he was just an elementary school teacher with a monthly salary of only over twenty and had to support a family of all sizes. His economic situation is far from that of Hidaching's family, but he thought to himself, perhaps Hidaching also carefully selected before purchasing a bicycle. So he pushed forward with all his might and curiously asked, Qing, how much did you spend on this bicycle? Without hesitation, He Da Qing extended two fingers. Two hundred. Yen Bugue asked in surprise. However, He Da Qing shook his head and said, I can't even afford a wheel for two hundred. I'm two dollars short, it's one hundred and ninety-eight. One ninety-eight Yen Bugue and his surrounding neighbors were shocked. He da Ching is really willing. 198, this is almost the total of my annual salary. Your annual salary can be earned by He da Ching in just four months. Alas, the gap between people is truly incomparable. Yi Zhonghai stood in the crowd and couldn't help but twitch at the price. He also thinks that He da Ching is a bit too extravagant. In his opinion, it is not appropriate to buy such an expensive item for his son. He stumbled over and lightly patted He Da Ching's shoulder, saying earnestly. Da Ching, spoiling your child like this will spoil him. Lao Yi, what are you saying? Do you dare to teach me a lesson without even a son Lu Haizhong retorted without hesitation? Yi Zhonghai's face suddenly darkened. He is three years younger than his bangs, but he has already given birth to three sons, and his wife is even struggling to conceive. Although he works as an intermediate fitter in a steel rolling mill and earns a decent salary, this issue has always been a pain in his heart. Now, when Lu Haizhong mentioned it in public, he was speechless but felt very angry in his heart. Yen Bugue looked at He Yuzhu's new car with envy in his eyes. He kept caressing the car body with both hands, although he didn't speak, his eyes had already expressed everything. He da Ching saw his thoughts and made an excuse with some embarrassment, saying. Lao Yen, we're going home for dinner. 
Please make way for it. Yen Bugui quickly stepped aside, but even after Hida Ching and the others walked away, he still stared at their new car. He Yuzhu felt a gaze behind him, knowing that it belonged to Yen Bugui. He jokingly said, Uncle Yen will definitely come to borrow the car in a few days. How can I lend him a new car? What if it's damaged? He da Ching shook his head and said. In a typical Chinese family, Su Damao, a young man eager to grow up, with an impulse, he returned home and slammed his backpack heavily on the table, excitedly speaking to Su Wood, his father. Dad, I want to buy a bicycle. Su Wood was leisurely sipping tea and reading newspapers, preparing to enjoy the tranquility of dinner when he was interrupted by Su Damao. He lifted his head with a hint of doubt and dissatisfaction in his eyes. What's bothering you outside, kid? You need a bicycle as soon as you enter the house. Silly Zhu's father bought him a bicycle. Su Damao has ample reasons. His family is on par with the Silly Zhu family in terms of economy, and he believes he should have the same thing. I want him to have it too. Su Wood, however, did not think so. He pointed out, if someone has something, you should have it. Why don't you grab the dog at the door and eat it? Su's mother, a hard-working housewife, heard the father and son's argument, hurriedly put down the stir-fry in his hand and entered the room, trying to calm the storm. Why are you father and son arguing again? If you have anything to say, let's have dinner first. Su would complain that Su Damao's return had ruined his good mood, while Su Damao insisted on his demands. Su's mother tried to ease the atmosphere, but found that Su Wood did not accept her efforts and instead complained about the meat she cut. The tense relationship between Su Wood and Su Damao is gradually escalating, Su Wood even accused Su Damao of being impolite, but Su Damao felt misunderstood by his father. Finally, Su Damao lost control of his emotions and rushed to seek comfort from his mother, crying. Su's mother attempted to comfort Su Damao while questioning Su Wood's behavior. However, when Su Wood revealed that the price of the bicycle was 198, Su's mother was also shocked. Su Wood's words were like a heavy hammer, hitting Su Damao's heart hard. He never expected that even his mother, who usually dotes on him the most, would not stand on his side. You have to cry outside. Don't bother me here. Su Wood roared, and the grievances in Su Damao's heart surged in an instant. He stood up stubbornly and rushed towards the door. Su's mother chased after him for a few steps, but in the end, she couldn't hold on to him. She turned around and looked at Su Wood with a melancholy expression on her face, saying, Wood, why don't we grit our teeth and buy a bicycle for Su Damao? You pay for it. I'll buy it for him right away. Su Wood responded with a sneer. No, Su's mother argued, you said we saved so much money, isn't it still for Damao? We only have one son. Who told you that all the money I saved was for him? That's my pension. I'll keep it for my future use. Su Wood's voice was cold and piercing. What's the use of keeping so much money? Taking care of children to prevent old age, and ultimately relying on sons for retirement. Su's mother insisted. You can rely on your son to make a living. Su Wood spat disdainfully and said, Remember when? Keeping money with oneself is the most secure. Don't believe it, look at it. He's so used to being foolish. In the future, when he gets old, foolish Zhu may not even care about him. Su's mother was powerless to refute, just sighed lightly and said. This is also true of Hida Ching. Just buy a bicycle for my child, what should I show off to my son? Su Damao ran out crying and unconsciously stopped at the door of Hiyuzhu's house. The Hida Ching family is having a meal, and the three of them are chatting and laughing happily. Su Damao noticed that Hida Ching had been serving vegetarian dishes and peanuts in front of him with wine, and he sandwiched the meat and vegetables into the bowls of Hiyuzhu and he rainwater. Seeing this scene, Su Damao felt sour in his heart. Other people's fathers may have their own children, but their own fathers always only think of themselves. 
and the person who got a good father turned out to be his arch-nemesis, stupid pillar. How can he be willing? Su Damao wiped away his tears, then opened his eyes again and saw the bicycles parked by their wall. A hint of determination flashed in his eyes, and he decided to fight for himself once. Establish a safety committee. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The voice of Hiyuju echoed in the morning air, accompanied by the crowing of chickens and the barking of dogs, as well as the greetings of neighbors. Dad. I sent rainwater to school. I'll see you at the factory later. He tightly grasped he rainwater's small hand and turned around to shout into the room. After receiving he Ching's answer, they walked up to the bicycle parked in the corner. But he Yuju's footsteps suddenly stopped, and he saw several half-pulled footprints on the land. The shape of those footprints is clearly not that of adults. He didn't pay attention at first, so he pushed his bike forward. However, the bicycle did not move at all. Brother. Why is the bicycle wilt deflated? He rainwater pointed at the withered bicycle tire and looked at Hiyuju with wide eyes in confusion. Hiyuju quickly squatted down to check. In an instant, his face was filled with anger and he shouted loudly. Who deflated the wheels of my bicycle? Who? His shout was like thunder on the flat ground, first shouting he Ching out of the room. He Ching was even more excited than he usually when he saw a needle hole on the withered bicycle tire. Who? Who touched my son's bicycle? It's too damaged. Damn it. It's impossible to recruit thieves in this courtyard. He Ching roared angrily. He usually shouted again, and the neighbors captured the crucial information. A thief has entered the courtyard. They rushed from all directions, dressed in clothes, carrying rice bowls, and holding children. Thieves have been recruited in the courtyard. The spread speed of this sentence is comparable to that of a virus, with neighbors gathering at the doorstep of his house at the fastest speed. The fastest is the Jia family mother and son who live across the street. Jia Zhang led his son Jia Dongxu to occupy the sea spot and commented on the withered bicycle on the ground. This thief is really interesting. He doesn't steal wheels and tie them. If it were me, I would unload the bicycle wheels and still be able to sell for a few more dollars, that's right. A car wheel can sell for several yuan. Jia Dongxu agreed thoughtlessly. He Yuzhu was speechless. Aunt Jia, Jia Dongxu. You just watch the excitement, can you stop talking sarcastically? Hey. You idiot. How can you talk to elders? Jia Zhang was immediately displeased, with the melon seed skin sticking to his mouth and sticking to his waist, looking like a shrew. Silly pillar. I'm several years older than you. When you see me, you still have to call me brother. Jia Dongxu relied on his own mother to be by his side, pretending to be a fox or a tiger, and went up in anger. He Yuzhu glanced over with a murderous look. Jia Dongxu's neck shrank and he was so scared that he hid behind Jia Zhang. As soon as Jia Zhang saw that his son was frightened, he became unhappy and pointed at He Da Qing, saying. He Da Qing, you still don't care about your son. I have been bullying people in the courtyard since I was young, and when I grow up, I won't become a street bully anymore. Is that okay? He Da Qing was full of anger and had nowhere to go. He heard Jia Zhang buzzing in his ear. Angry and roaring, shut up, you. My son is not yet under your control. Why are you everywhere? If you are so meddling, come and solve the case. Can you tell me who punctured this bicycle tire? Jia Zhang was forced to take two steps back and pulled her son to hide in the crowd. He usually shook his head when he saw the virtues of these women. In his impression, Qin Huairu had not yet married in, and Jia Dongxu had not yet become an apprentice to Yi Zhonghai. Neither of the women worked in the courtyard and were considered idle individuals who had earned eight classics. Usually there's nothing to do, but Jia Zhang and Jia Dongxu wander around the courtyard, making jokes and jokes. No one takes his mother seriously. But the two of them take themselves seriously. 
you have to interject into any idle matters. If anyone said a few words to them, Jia Zhang would cross her waist and curse loudly. Do you know how our old Jia died? That was a sacrifice for the factory. Without us, Lao Jia doesn't even have your day today. When the neighbors heard her words, they basically didn't want to talk to them anymore. Everyone knows in their hearts. Lao Jia's death was not due to his own illegal behavior of drinking too much alcohol, which resulted in an accident. The steel rolling mill is also merciful to Lu Bancheng for compensating them. What happened? At this moment, Yi Zhonghai walked out of the crowd, calm and composed, with a look of being able to make decisions. Immediately after, Lu Haizhong, Yan Bugue, and Su Wood all came over. He da Ching angrily explained the whole story. Yan Bugue's eyes turned and said, Our courtyard has never been closed. No one's house has ever lost anything, nor has it been damaged. He da Ching's words are like a spring breeze blowing away the lingering coldness of winter, the neighbors nodded one after another, as if they had found an outlet to solve the problem. But Su Wood is not satisfied with this superficial harmony. He knew very well that in addition to catching the real culprit, they must also take precautions in advance. Don't say that he da Ching was destroyed. I'm feeling uneasy now, afraid that there might be some problems at home Su Wood stood up and suggested, it's useless to just say something to eliminate it and cause destruction. I think it's better to spontaneously establish a safety committee in our courtyard. Specially handling major and minor matters and security work in the courtyard. What do you think of my proposal? What is the safety committee? Someone asked. Almost the committee responsible for the safety of our compound, right? Sue would explain, it's about selecting a few representatives from our courtyard. Responsible for handling major and minor matters in our courtyard and protecting the safety of all of us. In the future, no matter who has problems, you can find several representatives to judge. What activities do the street office have? These representatives are also responsible for organizing and executing them the neighbors listened and whispered, but no one stood up to oppose. Although the bangs in the crowd remained silent, his heart was beating fiercely. He is aware that the representative of this safety committee is the leader in the courtyard, who controls the fate of the entire courtyard. He is confident, relying on his three sons and his position in the steel rolling mill, he has sufficient qualifications and abilities to play this important role. So he raised his hand without hesitation to show agreement. I agree with Lao Tzu's suggestion. What happened today caught us all off guard. As the saying goes, dragons cannot be without a head. With so many people in our courtyard, it is time to select a few leaders and leaders to take charge of everything in the courtyard. With leadership, we can also systematically strengthen the security of the courtyard. This is a very good thing for us. The support in the bangs is like a stone thrown into the calm lake, causing ripples layer by layer. Other neighbors also raised their hands in agreement. I also agree. There are too many people in our courtyard, there is no organization or discipline, and accidents will happen sooner or later. Even if we can't prevent it, someone will always make a decision and come up with a plan after an accident.